Why do we procrastinate? In order to find this out, we asked a few experts. People think procrastination is a, it's a, it's a physical, it's a systems problem. Well, it's not. If you want to create new change in your life, you got to create new belief systems. If you want to agree with me, say I. So at its core, procrastination is a, it's essentially a time management issue. If you want to stop procrastinating and go after your dreams, you got to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and just fucking grind. Stay fucking hard. Procrastination is a dragon. It seems that depending on who you ask about procrastination and the reason for it, you'll get a slightly different answer each time. So we did a rather imaginative thing by looking for another answer we'd not heard before. In this search, we came across an article featuring Dr. Fushia Saroy, an expert of psychology and procrastination from the University of Sheffield, which sheds some interesting light on the topic and the reason for procrastination, which I think you will find quite interesting, as well as three practical strategies for overcoming and resolving this root cause issue. So if you are a procrastinator like myself, you are gonna to wanna to watch this video till the end. Dr. Saroy suggests that procrastination at its root cause is not a time management issue or laziness, a self-control issue, although those things do contribute some of the time. She suggests that procrastination can be boiled down to a single root cause, poor mood management. She claims that at its core, procrastination is about not being able to manage your moods and emotions. Although many think impulsivity and self-control are the problems, and they do play a factor, underneath is a poor emotional response. Also, people who claim to be chronic procrastinators have more gray matter in the amygdala, which is a section of the brain re responsible for emotional processing and the fight or flight response. So in other words, people who claim to be chronic procrastinators they genuinely do feel the effects, the negative emotions associated with procrastination in a more intense way than non-procrastinators. It's, it's, it's an actual difference that they feel. Another factor that contributes to procrastination is a cognitive bias called temporal discounting. Temporal discounting is when we fail to consider the long-term effects of our actions. In fact, there's a few studies from the University of California that showed that when imagining their future selves, participants of this study actually felt a similar emotional response or, or lack thereof than if they were thinking about a total stranger. Using functional MRI scans, researchers discovered that different sections of the brain are activated when we process information about our present and future selves, and that when we imagine our future self, the same regions of the brain are activated as when we think of a stranger. So this is why it can be so hard to do something in the moment that will benefit us in the long term. The gratification isn't as immediate and neither are the negative consequences of doing nothing. And to our brains, it doesn't really matter what happens in the long term as long as we're surviving now. Our brain doesn't really care. So if procrastination can be boiled down to poor mood management with a hint, just a dash of temporal discounting, what can we do? to resolve this issue. Here are three practices that you can implement that have been shown to benefit mood regulation and reduce procrastination. Practice number one, mindful self-compassion. One of the things that Dr. Fushia Saroy found as well is there's a strong correlation between low levels of self-compassion and people who claim to be chronic procrastinators. So what we discovered working with people closely to heal procrastination, to overcome this problem in our Focus and Action Live classes is that people who are chronic procrastinators, they're usually perfectionists and they usually are pretty damn hard on themselves as well. So Dr. Saroy from the University of Sheffield actually mentions this in the article I mentioned earlier. And there's a study that actually links procrastination with lower levels of self-compassion as well. And in this study, Mindfulness was shown to reduce the likelihood of a person procrastinating. And these participants only did a mindfulness exercise that lasted just three minutes. So mindfulness, even in small doses, can be shown to reduce procrastination too. So we highly recommend practicing mindfulness and self-compassion together. In order to get started with this, I highly recommend checking out this guided meditation from Kristin Neff, the founder of selfcompassion.org. And by the way, that website is absolutely awesome for people who struggle to go easy on themselves. So I highly recommend that too. I also recommend you listen to the Radical Self-Acceptance audiobook 
by Tara Bratch or Brack. I can't quite make my mind up which one it is. It's got a ton of guided meditations in that audiobook, as well as just some underlying theory. You know, I highly recommend you listen to that. You'll go a lot easier on yourself, which will reduce this sort of triggered emotional arousal you experience that leads you to procrastinate. Practice number two, temporal thinking. So the cognitive bias known as temporal discounting that we talked about earlier, in this study, people were shown to reduce the effects of temporal discounting by just thinking about their future selves more often, sometimes as little as just 10 minutes at a stretch. So for this practice, what I actually recommend is that you consistently take time out to think about your future self. Think about where you're actually going. Think about the consequences of inaction. And also think about the consequences of your current actions. Let's say, for example, your, your diet isn't great or you're not really exercising much or you're procrastinating on doing that thing that you keep saying you're gonna do. One trap we can often fall into is we can think that the future version of ourselves is gonna be in a much better place to deal with these issues. So we just end up putting it off until later. This, however, is a fallacy. The truth is, it's equally as likely that the future version of ourselves is gonna be experiencing just as much discomfort as we are in this moment. So you're not getting rid of the negative emotions, you're just delaying them until later. Intentional temporal thinking might sting. It might hurt when you start thinking about where you're going. It might cause a little bit of nervousness. You're not quite sure where you're going, blah, 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 all this stuff. But we're saying it is essential for you to feel the full consequences of inaction and stop putting things off until later and take action more immediately. Or if you're really serious about this, you might wanna jump in right at the deep end and start contemplating your own mortality, just like we did in our own retreat that we went on a few months ago. Practice number three, cognitive reframing. So one of the things that can happen when we start engaging in say studying or work is we can lose a sense of meaning, purpose and connection to what it is we're actually doing in a broader context. After a while of just daily tasks, it can start to feel quite mundane and we often wonder like, why are we even doing this? We lose connection to what it really means to us. So when thinking of something that you're procrastinating on, it helps to ask yourself a few important questions that re-establish the connection to the action. So I'd like you to do this. I'd like you to think of something that you're currently procrastinating on. I want you to grab a pen and paper and I want you to get ready to write something down. By the way, don't procrastinate on this. Pause the video and actually do this right now, please. Ask yourself three questions. Question one, how will completing this goal be valuable in how you see yourself? Question two, how will completing this goal be valuable in how others see you? And question three, how will completing this goal be valuable to your personal growth? When you answer questions like these, you re-establish that connection and you might even feel a sense of renewed, refreshed excitement for the work that you're actually doing, which will reduce the likelihood that you will procrastinate. If you wanna crush procrastination and eliminate this problem from your life, click the link below in the description to get access to more tools like the ones in this video. This is Ollie from Macario. Good luck.